Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. According to the Centers for Disease Control, there are 40 million American adults who smoke cigarettes. That's about 17% of the adult population. I don't think that, um, and this is a decline by the way from 2005 when almost 21% of Americans smoked. So we can say that there has been some success in reducing the smoking rate. And one of the reasons is that I think most people know that smoking is harmful and increases the risk of many diseases and also premature death. Cigarettes and tobacco smoke contain over 7,000 chemicals, many of which have been shown to be harmful, and some of which have been shown to increase the risk of cancer. It's not surprising that almost 70% of adults who smoke say they want to quit. Unfortunately, when kids pick up the habit, they don't seem as interested in quitting. Adolescent smokers um, say that less than 50, or they report less than 50% of high school smokers say they want to quit. And, um, and that's kind of disturbing. And, and you wonder why, is it because they really enjoy the habit or they're not really able at that age to understand the risks associated with the habit? Uh, quitting is difficult, and any of you who have smoked, I used to be a smoker. I used to smoke a lot, in fact, which is why this topic is kind of interesting to me. I smoked four packs a day for a good number of years. And I guess one of the reasons is because I've always been a person that did everything to excess, and I suppose that covered smoking too, right? If I was going to do it, I was going to be a champion smoker. Well, quitting is difficult. Most people make several attempts to do it. Some report, uh, researchers have reported that the nicotine in cigarettes is just as addictive as any other drug like heroin or cocaine. Common withdrawal symptoms are unpleasant, and they include things like weight gain and irritability, anxiety, cognitive impairment, and nicotine cravings. So it's not surprising to find out that the failure rate for quitting is really high. According to the Centers for Disease Control, of the 69% of adult smokers who wanted to quit in 2010, more than half tried, but only 6.2% succeeded. So I suppose one thing that we could conclude is we need better options or programs for people to quit smoking because clearly what we're doing is not working. Well, the failure rate for smoking cessation has led to the development of products that promise to reduce the risk of smoking-related disease and death, e-cigarettes. While researchers and investors have been interested in, and in and experimenting with the design of such a product, uh, the first e-cigarette was actually made in Beijing, China by a 52-year-old pharmacist. Three years later, after that, e-cigarettes started actually hitting the market in places like the United States and Europe. Now, makers of e-cigarettes have historically made health claims, including that the use of their products can help people to quit smoking, that e-cigarettes are less harmful than smoking real cigarettes. Until recently, the products were not regulated, but the FDA recently um, was charged with regulating the products and any claims made about them. So by February 15th of 2017, all makers of e-cigarettes, new products will have to register with the FDA. And the FDA has already taken the step of banning the sale of the products to minors. Well, what are e-cigarettes, in case you've never seen them? They're battery-powered devices that actually resemble cigarettes and which transform nicotine into a vapor. They allow a smoker to continue to smoke and to get the same feeling he would get from smoking a real cigarette, and that's because nicotine is the addictive substance in cigarettes, and e-cigarette users don't have to give up the nicotine when they convert to using them. They're just getting the buzz from a different source, which is the vapor instead of the smoke. There are several types of e-cigarettes, which include pens and pipes and hookahs and even e-cigars, and they're collectively referred to as electronic nicotine delivery systems, or ENDS. There are hundreds of products on the market, and the different products contain varying doses of nicotine and even offer nicotine in flavors such as chocolate, mint, and fruit. These flavors might explain the fascination with um, high school and middle school students with e-cigarettes. Um, the FDA and CDC both report that 16% of high school and 5.3% of middle school students use them. In addition to nicotine and flavoring agents, there are other chemicals in the products. Until recently, there was no requirement for these chemicals to be listed or labeled in any way, so the only way to find out what was really in the products was to test them. Some tests have shown that the cartridges contain varying amounts of chemicals such as nitrosamines and formaldehyde, ranging from, ranging from none at all to trace amounts. However, the test results can be highly misleading because e-cigarettes, the use of them, requires heating the cartridges, which can then 
result in the formation of new compounds. And this is what happens when people smoke cigarettes. It doesn't somewhat matter what's in the cigarette. What matters is what happens when you heat the cigarette and all kinds of new compounds form. The FDA has tested cartridges in situations that resemble real life usage, the way they're actually used, and found that several chemicals, including nitrosamines and diethylene glycol, are present in the vapor of e-cigarettes. Some researchers have reported that the concentration of many chemicals in vapor is less than the concentration in conventional cigarettes, but there's no research at this time that shows that this actually results in better health outcomes for people who use e-cigarettes for a long period of time. One research group stated clearly that, quote, electronic cigarettes are not a smoking cessation product and that they are, quote, unsafe and hazardous to health. This particular group reported significant side effects from using them, which included, quote, nausea, vomiting, headache, dizziness, choking, burn injuries, upper respir respiratory tract irritation, dry cough, dryness of the eyes and mucous membrane, release of cytokines and pro-inflammatory mediators, allergic airway inflammation, decreased exhaled nitric oxide synthesis in the lungs, um, and risk of lung cancer increases. Uh, so um, these, any claims of safety, according to this research group, would be gross misrepresentation. Now, some advocates insist that e-cigarettes help people to quit smoking, but one study showed that the use of the products by adolescents and young adults was associated with progressing to smoking conventional cigarettes. In other words, they lead to smoking, they don't lead away from it. A meta-analysis of 38 studies showed that the odds of quitting smoking were actually 28% lower in people who were using the e-cigarettes than people who did not. And this result was not affected by the individual's level of interest in quitting. So even a highly motivated person was 28% on average less likely to quit smoking as a result of using e-cigarettes. This is an analysis is very consistent with other studies. I was actually able to find several that showed not necessarily exactly the same percentage, but that um, they, they decrease, not increase the likelihood that somebody will quit. So the bottom line is the evidence is quite clear to me that e-cigarettes, um, using them does not lead to smoking cessation, may actually increase the use of tobacco products by adolescents. The claim that they're safer than conventional cigarettes hasn't been proven and several studies show that they actually may be more harmful. Now, I'm a, I'm a you know, free market capitalist type of thinker. I don't think they should come off the market. Uh, my mantra in all of these broadcasts and all of the things that I do here at Wellness Form Health is informed decision making. So my recommendation will be um, that we just, the FDA somehow force the products to be labeled accurately and promoted for what they are, which is another form of recreational drug use. I don't have a lot of confidence in the FDA, but maybe this is one way they could redeem themselves and make themselves somewhat useful, is to force the e-cigarette makers to uh, market their products using accurate representations. All right, that's all for today. As usual, please pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next week with more news.